Welcome back to Teach English Now. And thanks for sharing your thoughts about our first metaphor, language is cake. There are a lot of ways language is like cake. It is motivating, it nourishes and strengthens you. And as my activity demonstrated, it can be presented in a lot of different ways. And yet, some learners hate learning languages. How can that be? I'm sure you will agree that learning a language is wonderful. Let me share an additional thought by discussing some fascinating research that will help us understand why some learners don't like learning languages. In a controversial but famous 1993 study by Harvard researchers Nalini Ambadi and Robert Rosenthal, students observing teachers were able to accurately predict the teachers who were really bad and really good. What makes the study so controversial is the amount of time it took students to make those predictions. Want to take a guess? How long do you think students watched teachers in a classroom before they were able to predict if the teachers were good or bad? Well, believe it or not, it took students six seconds. And remember, they accurately, correctly predicted based on outside evidence, such as test scores and administrative evaluations of the teachers. Now, what is it that you think students could see in their teachers so quickly that could help them predict so well which teachers would help them learn? Personally, I have a hunch that the students weren't paying attention to the class content at all. So what were they paying attention to in those six seconds? Whether you like it or not, students are paying attention to you. Your presentation, your style, your way of standing up. In other words, while you may have the greatest tasting cake in your hands, how you present the cake is one of the most important factors for student success. Another way to say this is that learners often see technique before they see content. Teachers, on the other hand, seem to be divided into two groups, those that think about technique and those that think about content. Let me try to represent this visually. The relationship between technique and content is like points on a graph. On the x-axis, we have technique, represented by this blue line. And on the y-axis, we have content, represented by the red line. Now, let me ask you a question. University teachers, are they more interested in content or technique? Well, in my professional teacher training experience, I guess I would say that many university teachers care a lot about content. Perhaps this is because many perceive themselves as researchers, writers of books and articles. I remember hearing one educational expert remark that professors think of their bodies as nothing more than transportation for their brains. As a teacher trainer myself, as I do training, I am often surprised at how few university teachers have received any training about technique at all. Does that sound true to you? Isn't it weird that some of our brightest minds in the world have taken hundreds of courses but never taken any courses, not one, on how to teach? They would fall into the high content, low technique area of the spectrum. At the other end of the spectrum, let's talk about teachers in primary and middle schools. Do they use techniques? You better believe it. In fact, before primary teachers are ever given a chance to teach students, they are often given many courses on how to teach and make things both interesting and easily understood for students. They use colors, games, and stories. They use their hands and bodies. Bodies are not just transports for their brains. They are taught techniques that break down information and make it easy for a learner to understand. Techniques such as group work, flashcards, color-coded board work, I love it. However, the opposite problem can often happen here. While techniques are usually studied and utilized, 
sometimes primary and middle school teachers are not given the freedom to choose their own books and materials. And thus, they spend most of their time thinking about technique and not about the content. Another problem in the balance of content and technique is the fun teacher. You know the one. His class is one game after another. You get to laugh a lot. He tells lots of funny stories about his three dogs. But how much have you learned? Do the games provide instruction as well as fun? Do the stories teach a key learning point? Or has much of the valuable class time been more social than educational? This is not meant as a criticism of teachers on either end of the spectrum. Certainly, there are university teachers that use fantastic technique, and primary teachers who create amazing content. And a fun teacher can also be an excellent educator. The point is, and what I want you to consider, is who you are and where you will find the happy balance between both content and technique. As you train yourself as a language teaching professional, keep in mind the tremendous difference that both content, the cake, and technique, your presentation of the cake, will make in having successful classroom experiences. While we discuss content in future lessons, the next few videos will be dedicated to the wonderful world of technique technique to help make your content, the cake, more delicious. Thanks for watching.